All right, so Fireside Reunion Challenge 4. Fantastic red envelopes and where to find them. It's quite a mouthful. And uh, so this is just a standard boss fight, pretty much. I got to fight a Layden and a Chris here. I guess they're squabbling about uh, when they're going to get married or something, according to their skills. Uh, you can go and read the skill names. They're actually pretty funny. Uh, so as is typical for boss fights like this, they're immune to basically everything that matters, uh, except for attack and defense down debuffs. So of course I bring Almeida like I usually do. Now usually this fight, uh, I think what they meant for you to do is to fight both of them at once and they have a lot of annoying debuffs and they spam uh, some annoying adds that will steal boss from you and then give it to the boss which will increase their damage by a lot. But uh, since these bosses actually do move, uh, they behave just like normal AI. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm just going to use Vargas up top to draw Layden over and uh, use some units down under to draw Chris. And then everybody else will just kind of stack up at the bottom and beat the crap out of Chris. And then Vargas will just stay up top and tank Layden. And he could maintain that position pretty much forever because uh, between Almeida and Chris being able to heal all the way across the map, there really shouldn't be any issues with me uh, being being able to keep Vargas alive. Now these bosses do deal increased damage if they have any kind of buffs on them or if they have debuffs on you. So Vargas actually does have a couple debuffs on him because of the attack Layden did but as you can see uh, even with that Vargas really doesn't have any issues tanking these hits at all. Now the gimmick of this fight is that Layden will constantly shift between defense and magic defense up uh, so you have to either use magic or physical attacks depending on which turn it is. And for Chris, she constantly shifts between being able to take damage from female units and non-female units. Uh, so as you can see, I brought uh, two male units physical and two female units who are magical. And Vargas is also a physical male unit. But honestly, none of that matters because uh, since I'm kind of isolating Chris and lay down away from each other, I just need to take turns like having them beat up the boss and uh, other than that it just falls into a very straightforward rhythm. You're gonna see me checking the uh, buffs on the bosses constantly uh, just to make sure I didn't uh, accidentally forget which turn it is <laughs> because sometimes when you when fights like this go on for forever you you start to make dumb mistakes. Uh, so while Vargas is up there he of course can also just start chipping away and lay in a little bit He's not going to do that much damage, but you know, it's. I guess it's nice to just get the fight to be a little bit shorter than it needs to be. However, the time limit is not an issue here. You're given plenty of time to get rid of both of these bosses, even with the, uh, even with your damage output being limited by the fact that they're invincible to like half your team every single turn. Uh, now, as for the adds, uh, they're pretty much the reason I have brought Route on Parn. Uh, Route is just to make things a little bit. Uh, easier on myself. Uh, these adds are susceptible to pretty much every debuff you can think of, uh, including stun and sleep and all that stuff. So on the turn that they spawn, uh, which is at 80% life, 60% life, and I believe 40% life of the bosses, so they summon three adds in total, and they get progressively stronger. So uh, I just need to leave Parn around to stun them if I need to. And if stun isn't up, then you know it's not a big deal. I'll just take the hit from them. Uh, basically you can't leave the adds up for two turns straight because what they do is that they will spend one turn stealing your buffs and then the next turn they will give those buffs to the boss. Once the boss has any number of buffs they pretty much get a damage buff that is so big that uh, pretty much nobody can survive. And because of that you know yeah you have to kill the adds as appropriate. Uh, so right here I killed one of the adds. I actually didn't need to because since I stunned it the previous turn, uh, he hadn't stolen any buffs yet. But whatever the case, I kill him and I can't take care of the other ad right now. That's okay, he's just gonna waste a turn stealing my buffs. I just gotta make sure I spend the next turn killing that ad, otherwise uh, Chris is going to get a bunch of buffs and that is going to wipe me very easily. The adds always move before the bosses, so it's not like you are given any sort of breathing room after they get the buffs. Uh, your breathing room is the turn that they steal the buffs from you. 
But other than that, it's a very straightforward fight. Uh, again, just like all the other challenges this time, this is, there's really nothing to this fight. You just gotta realize that they move around and that you can isolate them and just take care of them very easily. Uh, don't fight both of them at the same time, it just makes it annoying. I mean, you can. It, it's really not that hard of a challenge even if you do that, but you know, might as well make it easier on yourself. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one.